In the country's 75th year of independence, India adds 11 additional wetland sites to its list of Ramsar sites. Bringing the total to 75 sites, spanning a total area of 13,26,677 hectares. Now, let's have a quick look at these 75 Ramsar sites in India. We will go state-wise, let's start the journey with Jammu Kashmir region. The Union Territory of Jammu Kashmir has five Ramsar wetland sites and the UT of Ladakh have two Ramsar wetland sites. The two latest declared Ramsar site of the region are the Haigam Wetland Conservation Reserve in the river Jhelum Basin and the Sholberg Wetland Conservation Reserve in the district of Srinagar. The biggest Ramsar site in UT of Jammu Kashmir and Ladakh is the Zomorairi Lake in the eastern Ladakh, with an area of 120 square kilometer. The Zomorairi Lake is the only breeding area outside of China for one of the world's most endangered crane species, the black-necked crane, as well as the only nesting place in India for bar-headed geese. Another important fact about the region is that the Ramsar site of Wula Lake is India's biggest freshwater lake. Now let's move to the next state in our list, and that is the coastal state Kerala, in south of India. The state of Kerala has three Ramsar wetland sites, all three were designated as Ramsar sites in 2002. Let's look at the importance of these three Ramsar sites in the country's southwest. The first Ramsar site is Sasthampotta Lake, in the Kolam area. It is the largest freshwater lake in Kerala state. It is the primary source of drinking water for half a million people in the Kolam district. The second Ramsar site in Kerala is Vembanadkol Wetland. It is the largest brackish, humid tropical wetland ecosystem on the southwest coast of India. It is fed by ten rivers and is a typical estuarine system. It is renowned for its clams and for supporting India's third-largest waterfowl population during the winter. It protects the densely populated coastal portions of three districts in Kerala from flooding. Vembanarkol wetland is a substantial groundwater recharger contributing to the region's well water supply. The third Ramsar site in Kerala is Ashtmudi wetland. It is a vast estuarine system, the second largest in Kerala. Ashtamudi wetland is an extensive estuarine system of extraordinary importance for its hydrological functions, biodiversity, and support for fish. The site also supports a large number of mangrove species. That's all about the Ramsar sites of Kerala. Now let's move to the next state in our list. The next state in our Ramsar list study is Rajasthan, and it is the largest Indian state by area. It covers 10.4% of India's total geographical area. Under the Koppen climate classification, the greater part of Rajasthan falls under hot desert, and the remaining portions of the state fall under hot semi-arid. The climate of the state ranges from arid to semi-arid. So the number of wetlands in the state is also less, and that is only two. The two Ramsar sites in Rajasthan are Sambhar Lake and the Kyoledio Ghana National Park. Let's first learn about Kyoledio National Park. Kyoledio is a World Heritage Site, National Park, and Bird Sanctuary all rolled into one. It is a collection of man made and seasonal lagoons of varied sizes located in a highly populated area. But due to water scarcity and an imbalanced grazing regime, the site was added to the Montreux record in 1990. The vegetation of Kyoledio National Park comprises scrub and open grassland. Now, let's learn about the second Ramsar site in Rajasthan, Sambhar Lake. Sambhar Lake is a vast saline lake supplied by four streams that are placed in a shallow wetland. The site is famous for a variety of wintering waterbirds, including large numbers of flamingos. The lake is flanked by sand plains and dry thorn scrub and nourished by seasonal rivers and streams. That's all about Ramsar sites in Rajasthan. Let's go ahead. 
The next state on our list is Odisha. Odisha is an eastern Indian state on the Bay of Bengal and is known for its tribal cultures and many ancient Hindu temples. Odisha enjoys a tropical monsoon-type climate situated in the coastal area. In the year 2022, four new Ramsar sites were added in the state of Odisha, which is named Tampara Lake, Hirakud Reservoir, Satkosia Gorge and Ansupa Lake. So the total number of Ramsar sites in Odisha is now six. Now let's study these six sites in brief. The largest Ramsar site in Odisha is Chilika Lake. The Chilika Lake is the largest brackish water lagoon in Asia and one of the largest tropical lagoons in the world. It has also been marked as Category 1 Marine Protected Area. The site was designated as a Ramsar site in the year 1981. Chilika Lake is a brackish lake separated from the Bay of Bengal by a long sand ridge. It is subject to seawater exchange, which causes extreme changes in salinity in different parts of the lake over the year. During winter, a large portion of this lagoon remains submerged and acts as a wetland, which also serves as breeding and nesting grounds for millions of migratory bird species. Chilika was placed on the Montreux record in 1993 due to problems caused by siltation and sedimentation, which was closing the lake's mouth, but fortunately, it was removed from the record in 2002 following the restoration work for which the Chilika Development Authority earned the Ramsar Wetland Conservation Award in 2002. One crucial fact about Chilika Lake is the presence of Iravadi dolphins. Iravadi dolphin distribution in Lake Chilika is considered to be the highest single lagoon population. Iravadi dolphins fall under Schedule 1 of the Indian Wildlife Protection Act, 1972 and it is also listed in the IUCN Red List of Endangered Species. Now let's see the next Ramsar site. Bitalknika Mangroves The Bitalknika National Park Mangrove Forest is the second largest mangrove in India. It is located in the estuary of Brahmani, Bhatrani, Dhamra and Mahandi river systems. Bitalknika Sanctuary is one of the most beautiful remaining sections of mangrove forest on the Indian coast. 25 years of ongoing conservation efforts have resulted in the site becoming one of the most well-known wildlife sanctuaries. The site's Gehirmatha Beach is home to the world's largest known olive ridley sea turtle nesting habitat, with 500,000 nestings each year. With over 700 saltwater crocodiles, the site boasts the largest density of saltwater crocodiles in India. Of India's 58 recorded mangrove species, 55 are found in Bhitalknika, a wider mangrove diversity than in the Sundarbans. The third Ramsar site of Odisha is Satkosia Gorge. Satkosia Gorge holds two crucial designations. It is a tiger reserve and also a wildlife sanctuary. Satkosia Tiger Reserve is located in Odisha's heartland and is spread over four districts. The river Mahandi flows through the valleys in the middle of the reserve. Satkosia Gorge Sanctuary owes its name to the narrow stretch of Mahandi, that is Satkosh, or seven miles long, near Tikarpara, south of Ambul district. The fourth Ramsar site of Odisha is Tampara Lake. Ganjam district is home to one of the most renowned freshwater lakes in the state of Odisha, which is the Tampara Lake. It is a depression on the land, which was eventually filled by rainwater from catchment flow and was referred to by the British as Tamp and afterwards by the locals as Tampra. It is an essential habitat for vulnerable species. It was declared a Ramsar site in the year 2022. The fifth Ramsar site of Odisha is Hirakud Reservoir. Hirakud Reservoir, Odisha's largest earthen dam, began operations in 1957. The reservoir is home to a variety of floral and faunal species. The reservoir provides water for hydropower generation and irrigation of the cultural command area. The wetland also serves an essential hydrological function by reducing floods in the Mahandi Delta. It was also declared a Ramsar site in the year 2022. The sixth and the last Ramsar site of Odisha is Ansupa Lake. 
Ansupa Lake is Odisha's largest freshwater lake, located in the Baki subdivision of the Katak district, and has long been known for its scenic beauty, biodiversity, and natural riches. The wetland, which covers an area of 231 acres, is an oxbow lake produced by the Mahandi River. Because it is an important wintering site for migrating birds and is also noted for its aesthetic magnificence, the marsh offers enormous recreational and tourist potential. It was also declared a Ramsar site in the year 2022. That was all about the six Ramsar sites in the state of Odisha. Let's now go to the next state on the list. Now let us see the Ramsar sites in the state of Himachal Pradesh. Himachal is in the western Himalayas. It is a mountainous state. It is the northernmost state of India and shares borders with the Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh to the north and the states of Punjab to the west, Haryana to the southwest, Uttarakhand to the southeast and a very narrow border with Uttar Pradesh to the south. The state also shares an international border to the east with the Tibet Autonomous Region in China. Himachal Pradesh is also known as Dev Bhumi, meaning Land of Gods, and Veer Bhumi, which means Land of the Brave. The state of Himachal Pradesh has three Ramsar wetlands. The first Ramsar wetland site of Himachal Pradesh is Chandertal Wetland. The Chandertal wetland is a high-altitude lake in the upper Chandra valley fed by the western Himalayan Chandra River. It is near the Kunjam Pass, which connects the Himalayan and Peer Panjal mountain ranges. The vegetation of the wetland region comprises degraded forests and grasslands. The important species found here include the snow leopard, golden eagle, chaw, red fox, Himalayan ibex, and blue sheep. Let's see the next Ramsar site. The second Ramsar wetland site of Himachal Pradesh is Pong Dam Lake. Maharana Pratap Sagar, also known as Pong Reservoir or Pong Dam Lake, is a large reservoir in Fatehpur, Javli and Dehra Tehsil of Kongra district of the state of Himachal Pradesh in India. It was created in 1975 by building the highest earthfill dam in India on the Bees River in the wetland zone of the Shivalik Hills. Hydrological benefits of Pong Dam Lake include flood prevention during the monsoon season, both in the immediate vicinity and downstream, electricity generation for HP and neighboring states, and irrigation water channeling to fertile areas of the Punjab and Rajasthan deserts. Pong Reservoir is also the most important fish reservoir in the foothills of the Himalayas in Himachal Pradesh. Let's see the next Ramsar site. The third Ramsar wetland site of Himachal Pradesh is Renuka Wetland. Renuka Wetland is in the Sirmaur district of Himachal Pradesh, the largest natural lake in Himachal. It is a naturally occurring wetland with freshwater springs and inland underground cursed formations fed by a little stream flowing from the lower Himalayas to the Giri River. The Renuka Lake is named after the mother of Hindu sage Parshuram and is frequented by thousands of pilgrims and visitors. The area of this wetland was declared as a Ramsar site in the year 2005. That is all about the three Ramsar sites of Himachal Pradesh. Let's see the next state on our list. Now we will see the Ramsar sites in the state of Assam. The state of Assam, popularly known as the land of the Red River and Blue Hills, is the gateway to North East India. Geographically, the state lies between the foothills of the eastern Himalayas and the Patkai and Naga Hill ranges. The state is bordered in the north by Bhutan and in the east by Arunachal Pradesh. Along the south lie Nagaland, Manipur and Mizoram. Meghalaya lies to the southwest, West Bengal and Bangladesh to the west. The Brahmaputra and the Barak are the two major river systems of the state. All the rivers in Assam are liable to floods, mainly because they receive heavy rainfall within a short time. The state of Assam consists of only one Ramsar site, and that is Deepay Beel. Deepay Beel is located to the southwest of Guwahati City, in Kamrup Metropolitan District of Assam, India. It is a permanent freshwater lake, 
in a former channel of the Brahmaputra River, to the south of the main river. Deepair Beel is a freshwater lake and serves as Guwahati's only major stormwater storage basin. The Beel is located on migratory flyways, and some of the highest concentrations of aquatic birds in Assam can be found here, particularly during the winter. Some globally threatened birds are found here, spot-billed pelican, lesser and greater adjutant stoke, and bear spotter. That is all about Deepay Beel. Now let's see the next state in our Ramsar list. Let us now see the Ramsar sites in Maharashtra. Maharashtra is the third largest state in the area in India after Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. Located in the western peninsular region of India, occupying a substantial portion of the Deccan Plateau. Maharashtra is the second most populous state in India. Maharashtra has a coastline of 720 kilometers. The Arabian Sea makes up Maharashtra's west coast. Now the Ramsar sites of the state. Maharashtra has three Ramsar sites, the latest being the Thane Creek declared in the year 2022. The other two are Lona Lake and Nandur Madmeshwar. Now let's see in brief these three Ramsar sites. First, we will see the latest Ramsar site in Maharashtra, Thane Creek. Thane Creek is now the largest Ramsar site in Maharashtra. Thane Creek is an inlet on the shoreline of the Arabian Sea that isolates the city of Mumbai from the Konkan region of the Indian mainland. The creek receives fresh water from multiple sources, the greatest of which is the Ulhas River followed by other drainage routes from different suburban neighborhoods of Mumbai, Navi Mumbai, and Thane. The Thane Creek Flamingo Sanctuary is situated on the western bank of Thane Creek. Thane Creek is surrounded on both sides by mangroves, which account for about 20% of all Indian mangrove species. These mangrove forests are vital because this mangrove forest protects the land from storms, tidal surges, saltwater seepage, and incursions by acting as a natural shelter belt. The mangrove acts as a nursery for various fish and helps support local fishing. The region is an essential part of the wetland complex of the bird's Central Asian flyway and has been designated an important bird area. Now let's move to the second Ramsar site in Maharashtra, Nandur Madmeshwar. The Nandur Madmeshwar Bird Sanctuary is located at Nifar Tehsil of Nashik district, known as the Bharatpur of Maharashtra. It is designated as Maharashtra's first Ramsar site in the year 2019. The site is a mix of lakes, marshes, and riparian forests. The construction of the Nandur Madmeshwar at the junction of the Godavari and Karwa rivers aided in creating a thriving wetland, Intended initially to alleviate water shortages in the surrounding region, the site now acts as a flood barrier and a biodiversity hotspot. Its diversified ecosystems contrast with the surrounding semi-arid conditions induced by the Western Ghats mountain range's rain shadow effect. The site is home to some of India's most recognizable species, including the leopard and Indian sandalwood. It also serves as a heaven for critically endangered species such as the Devlali minnow, Indian vulture, and white rumped vulture. The third and the last Ramsar site in Maharashtra is the Lona Lake. Lona Lake, also known as Lona Crater, is a notified National Geoheritage Monument. It is a saline, soda lake, located at Lonar in Buldhana district, Maharashtra. This Deccan Plateau wetland is an endoric or closed basin, almost circular in shape, formed by a meteorite impact on the basalt bedrock during the Pleistocene epoch. The lake has high salinity and alkalinity due to the lack of an outflow, which causes mineral concentrations when the lake water evaporates. Specialized microorganisms such as anaerobes, cyanobacteria, and phytoplankton thrive in this hostile chemical environment. Outside the lake, a wide range of plant and animal life and springs feed the lake with fresh water. That is all about the three Ramsar sites in the Maharashtra state. Let's now move to the next state.
The next state on our list is Uttarakhand. Uttarakhand is known for the natural environment of the Himalayas, the Bhabar and the Teri regions. It borders the Tibet Autonomous Region of China to the north, the Sudurpashchim Province of Nepal to the east, the Indian states of Uttar Pradesh to the south, and Himachal Pradesh to the west and northwest. Uttarakhand has a total geographical area of 53,483 square kilometers, of which 86% is mountainous and 65% is covered by forest. Most of the northern parts of the state are part of the Greater Himalayan Ranges, also known as Himadri, surrounded by the high Himalayan peaks and glaciers. At the same time, the lower foothills were densely forested till denuded by the British log merchants and later, after independence, by forest contractors. Two of India's great rivers, the Ganges and the Yamuna, take birth in the glaciers of Uttarakhand state and are fed by myriad lakes, glacial melts and streams. Uttarakhand consists of only one Ramsar site, which is Asan Conservation Reserve. The Asan Barrage in 1967 created a dam and stopped the river's flow. This caused the river to become more shallow and led to the creation of bird-friendly habitats. Basically, it is a stretch of the Asan River until its confluence with the Yamuna River in the Dehradun district of Uttarakhand. It is situated at the intersection of the rivers Yamuna and Asan and forms a critical transition zone between riverine and forest ecosystems. Important species of this region include the critically endangered, red-headed vulture, white-rumped vulture, and bear spotcher. The site was declared a Ramsar site in the year 2020. That's all the essential information about this only Ramsar site of Uttarakhand. Let us see the next state on our list. Now we will study the site in Karnataka. Karnataka is a state in southwest India with Arabian Sea coastlines. It is situated on a tableland where the western Ghats and the eastern Ghats converge into the complex in India's western part of the Deccan Peninsula region. Karnataka is rich in mineral wealth, distributed relatively evenly across the state. As far as Ramsar site is concerned, the state have only one Ramsar site, which is Randanthittu Bird Sanctuary. The Randanthittu Bird Sanctuary was declared a Ramsar site in 2022. Located in the Mandya district of the state, it is the largest bird sanctuary in the state, 40 acres in area and comprises six islets on the banks of the Kaveri River. This area consists of gently sloping plains crossed by numerous big rivers that originate in the western Ghats mountain range and run eastward to the Bay of Bengal. It is home to robust populations of mugger crocodiles, smooth-coated otters, and hum-backed mussels. The site also supports more than 1% of the world's painted stoke, spotbill pelican and black-headed ibis populations, earning its designation as an important bird and biodiversity area. That's all about Ramsar site in Karnataka. Let's go ahead. The next state on our list is Manipur. The state is bordered by the Indian states of Nagaland to its north, Mizoram to its south, Assam to its west, and shares an international border with Myanmar to its east. The name Manipur means land of gems. The state has two major physiographic regions, the Manipur River Valley and a large surrounding tract of mountainous country. As far as Ramsar site is concerned, the state have only one Ramsar site, which is Loktak Lake. Loktak Lake is a freshwater lake in northeast India. It is the largest freshwater lake in South Asia. It is a pulsating lake, with a surface area varying from 250 square kilometer to 500 square kilometer during the rainy season. Loktak Lake was declared a Ramsar site in the year 1990. On 16 June 1993, it was added to the Montreux record. It is a big but diminishing freshwater lake with surrounding swamplands fed by multiple streams. Thick, Floating mats of salt-covered weeds known as fumids are a distinguishing feature of Loktak Lake. 
The sungay is an endemic and endangered subspecies of ELD's deer found only in Manipur, India. It is also the state animal of Manipur. Its common English name is Manipur Broentler deer or ELD's deer. Its original natural habitat is the floating marshy grasslands of the Kebul Lamjao National Park, located in the southern parts of Loktak Lake. The lake is heavily used by locals as a water supply for irrigation and domestic purposes and also serves as an important wintering and staging habitat for waterbirds, particularly ducks. It is also very significant in flood control. It was added to the Montreux record in 1993 due to environmental issues like deforestation in the catchment area, water hyacinth infestation, and pollution. The construction of a dam and irrigation has resulted in the extinction of several native fish species in the area. That is all essential information about Loktak Lake, the only Ramsar site in Manipur. Now let's learn about the next state on our list. The next state on our Ramsar list is Punjab. Punjab is in northwestern India, bordered by Pakistan on the west, Jammu and Kashmir on the north. There is a total of six Ramsar sites in the state of Punjab. Let's see them one by one. The first Ramsar site we will learn about is the largest Ramsar site in Punjab, the Bees Conservation Reserve. It was declared a Ramsar site in the year 2019. The Bees Conservation Reserve covers a 185-kilometer stretch of the River Bees. The area of the reserve lies primarily in northwest Punjab. It was declared a conservation reserve by the government of Punjab in 2017. The Bees River flows down from the Himalayan foothills to the Harike, where it is split into multiple channels. The river is littered with islands, sandbars, and braided channels, resulting in a complex habitat supporting many species. Along this stretch, more than 500 bird species have been identified, and it has more than 90 fish species. The Bees Conservation Reserve is home to India's only known population of the endangered Indus River Dolphin. A campaign to reintroduce the critically endangered Gharial was launched in 2017 at Bees Conservation Reserve, with 47 individuals reintroduced into the river 30 years after their absence. Now let's see the next site, known as Roper Lake. Roper is an artificial wetland consisting of a lake and a river that was created in 1952 due to the construction of a barrage to divert water from the Sutlej River for drinking and agricultural purposes. This crucial ecological zone is located in the Shivalik foothills of the lower Himalayas. The habitat is a vital breeding ground for the endangered Indian pangolin and the nationally protected smooth Indian otter, hog deer, sambhar, and various reptiles. The next and third Ramsar site of Punjab is Keshopurmiani Community Reserve. The reserve is a mosaic of natural marshes, aquaculture ponds, and agricultural wetlands maintained by the annual rainfall runoff. It is heavily human-influenced and includes a series of managed fish ponds and cultivated crops such as lotus and chestnut. This management helps support a variety of flora. In this way, the site is an example of wise use of a community-managed wetland, which provides food for people and supports local biodiversity. The endangered spotted pond turtle and the vulnerable common potchard are among the threatened species found here. The next and fourth Ramsar site in Punjab is Harike Lake. Harike Wetland, also known as Harike Pattan, with the Harike Lake in the deeper part of it, is the largest wetland in northern India on the border of Tan Taran Sahib district and Ferropur district of Punjab. The wetland and the lake were formed by constructing the headworks across the Sutlej River in 1953. At the confluence of two rivers, Bees and Sutlej, a shallow water reservoir with 13 islands. 70% of the lake is covered with dense floating vegetation. It is major breeding, wintering, and staging area for birds. The rich biodiversity of this wetland plays a vital role in maintaining the hydrological balance in the catchment with its vast concentration of migratory fauna of waterfowl, 
including several globally threatened species. The entire lake is leased to commercial fishing companies on an annual basis. The fifth Ramsar site of Punjab is Kanjali. Kanjali wetland is a man-made wetland that subsumes Kanjali Lake and is located in the Kapoorthala district of Punjab. It was created in 1870 by constructing a water storage facility across the perennial Bean River, a tributary of the Bees River, to provide irrigation facilities to the hinterland. The location is critical for agriculture, which predominates in the surrounding fertile plain, and there are fewer pressures on water supplies than elsewhere in Punjab. From a religious standpoint, the stream is regarded as the most important in the state because it is related to the Sikh Guru, Sri Guru Nanak Dev Ji. The site is home to a wide range of aquatic, mesophytic, and terrestrial flora and fauna, and it also serves as an important regulator of groundwater recharge. The sixth and the last Ramsar site in Punjab is Nangal Wildlife Sanctuary. Nangal Wetland is a human-made reservoir that came into existence due to the Bhakranangal project in 1963. An area of 116 hectares of this human-made wetland, situated on the Sutlej River, in the foothills of Shivalik in district Rupnagar of Punjab, was declared a Ramsar site in 2019. Nangal Wildlife Sanctuary is home to many flora and fauna, including endangered species such as the Indian pangolin, Egyptian vulture, and vulnerable leopard. The place is historically significant since it was here in 1954 that the Indian and Chinese Prime Ministers codified the five principles of peaceful coexistence. Over half a million people downstream benefit from the reservoir's controlled water flow, which reduces the danger of flooding to people and property. That was all about the six Ramsar site in the state of Punjab. Let's now move to the next state on our list. Now let's cover the state having the most Ramsar sites in India, Tamil Nadu. As of October 2022, the state of Tamil Nadu has the most Ramsar sites in India, 14 in number, followed by the state of Uttar Pradesh with 10 sites. 13 of these Ramsar sites are newly declared Ramsar sites of India, surprisingly all in the year 2022. Let's see them one by one now. The first Ramsar site on our list for Tamil Nadu is the Gulf of Mannar Marine Biosphere Reserve. The Gulf of Mannar Marine Biosphere Reserve, located at India's southernmost coast, is the first marine biosphere reserve in South and Southeast Asia. The Gulf is one of India's most ecologically varied locations, where the southerly Bay of Bengal extension meets the Indian Ocean. The dugong, whale shark, green sea turtle, hawksbill turtle, and Indo-Pacific humpback dolphin are all globally threatened species found here. It is both a marine national park and a world heritage site. Point Calamia Wildlife and Bird Sanctuary is the second Ramsar site on our Tamil Nadu list. Point Calamia Wildlife and Bird Sanctuary is a 21.47 square kilometer protected area in Tamil Nadu, along the Polk Strait where it meets the Bay of Bengal at Point Calamia at the southeastern tip of Nagpattinam district. It is a coastal area comprising shallow waters, coastlines, extensive sandbars, intertidal flats and forests, mangroves, saline lagoons, and human-made salt extraction sites. The location is a breeding ground or nursery for various commercially valuable fish species, as well as prawns and crabs. Around the sanctuary's perimeter, some 35,000 fishermen and agriculturalists maintain their families. Spoonbill sandpiper and grey pelican, greater and lesser flamingos, are some important species found here. It was declared a Ramsar site in the year 2002. The third Ramsar site of Tamil Nadu is Pichwara Mangrove. The site, one of India's biggest mangrove ecosystems, is situated between the important estuaries of the Wella and Kolrun rivers and includes coastal and swamp forest habitats. It provides waterscape, backwater tours, and the unique site of mangrove trees firmly entrenched in a few feet of water. Like other mangrove wetlands in India, 
Pichwala mangrove supports several threatened species, such as the critically endangered great white bellied heron and spoonbill sandpiper, the endangered spotted green shank, and the vulnerable olive ridley turtle. The site also provides a spawning and nursing ground for commercially important prawns, mainly white and tiger prawns. The local communities revere the mangroves due to the significant spiritual value associated with the mangrove with toxic properties commonly known as tilay. The next and fourth Ramsar site of Tamil Nadu is Pallikarnai Marsh Reserve Forest. This freshwater marsh and partially saline wetland, located approximately 20 km south of Chennai, acts as an aquatic buffer for the flood-prone districts of Chennai and Chengalpattu. Pallikarnai marshland is the only surviving wetland ecosystem of the city and is among the few and last remaining natural wetlands of South India. It is one of the 94 identified wetlands under the National Wetland Conservation and Management Program, operationalized by the Government of India in 1985. Aside from its biological significance, the wetland serves a vital role in flood control for the city of Chennai absorbing water during rainy seasons and releasing it during dry spells. Seven adjacent villages rely on the marsh for a portion of their sustenance. Invasive and non-native species, home sewage, urban wastewater, and droughts are all threats to the site. The fifth Ramsar site of Tamil Nadu is Karikili Bird Sanctuary. Karikili Bird Sanctuary is a 61.1 hectare protected area in the Chengalpattu district of Tamil Nadu. The sanctuary is about 75 kilometers from Chennai, south of Chengalpattu. The Karikili Bird Sanctuary comprises two rain-fed non-perennial irrigation tanks, covering an area of more than 58 hectares. The site is level or slightly undulating, with low-ridged, rocky hillocks nearby. Rainfall fluctuates significantly from year to year, flooding the site during the monsoon months of July and September. The site is home to a variety of resident and migratory birds, the majority of which are waterbirds, as well as a few species of scavengers, including the near-threatened oriental dart and spot-built pelican. The wetland is also home to various animals, reptiles, and amphibians, including the jungle cat, bonnet macaque, jackal, python, sand boa, and frogs. The Karikili Bird Sanctuary has a long tradition of people working together to safeguard waterbirds, whose guano provides nutrient-rich water to farming fields. The site was designated as a bird sanctuary in 1972. The sixth Ramsar site of Tamil Nadu is Udhyamathandapuram Bird Sanctuary. Udhyama Thandapuram Bird Sanctuary is a protected area in the Thiruvalu district of Tamil Nadu. It was declared a protected area in December 1999. It is home to a variety of birds. The Udhyama Thandapuram Bird Sanctuary covers an area of around 0.45 square kilometer. It is fed by an irrigation tank that receives water from the Metu Dam and the northeast monsoon from August till December. The tank remains dry between April and August. The sanctuary is made up of irrigation tanks that people built. They are linked by an old network of canals filled with water from the Metur Dam through the Koriyal Canal. Several waterbirds use the site as a stopover and a place to raise their young. A notable aspect of the sanctuary is a large number of purple murhan and openbill stokes present during February and March. The Oriental Darter, Black-Headed Ibis, Eurasian Vigian, Northern Pintail, and Gargne are some of the fascinating species that have been seen here. The seventh Ramsar site of Tamil Nadu is Vedanthangal Bird Sanctuary. It is in the village of Vedanthangal and has a small irrigation tank surrounded by rocky plains and low-ridged, bare hills. This site is an important bird and biodiversity area, IBA because it is home to many species, such as the black-headed ibis, Eurasian spoonbill, black round night heron, and painted stork. The eighth Ramsar site of Tamil Nadu is Velode Bird Sanctuary. It is at a large lake surrounded by semi-dark bushes near Velour. This sanctuary is home to many foreign birds coming from various countries, some of which can be easily identified. 
Some easily found bird species include cormorants, teals, pintail ducks, pelicans, and darters. Because of the abundance of food supplies from nearby agricultural fields and other aquatic species, this man-made pond provides a perfect home for birds. It serves as a critical staging and nesting area for migrating birds on the Central Asian flyway, as well as resident species such as the Indian river tern, oriental darter, and painted stoke. Farmers from the surrounding villages benefit from increased crop yields due to the arrival of a huge number of birds whose droppings enrich the irrigation water. The ninth Ramsar site of Tamil Nadu is Vemmanur Wetland Complex. The Vembanul wetland is a man-made irrigation pond in Tamil Nadu, in the southernmost part of India. The site is part of an important bird and biodiversity area, IBA, and also part of the BirdLife International Data Zone. It is home to various waterbird species, including the Indian River Tern, Spotted Greenshank, Galgani, and Grey Pelican. The 10th Ramsar site of Tamil Nadu is Kunthankulam Bird Sanctuary. The site comprises irrigation tanks linked by a network of canals, established centuries ago and supplied by rivers flowing from the Western Ghats mountain range. Otherwise, it only gets water during the periodic monsoon rains. This wetland is South India's biggest breeding resident and migratory waterbird refuge. It is a Central Asian flyway's important bird and biodiversity area. The Indian Pond Heron Eurasian Vigin, Spotbilt Pelican, Oriental Data, and Northern Pintail are among the waterbirds found here. The 11th Ramsar site of Tamil Nadu is Chitranguri Bird Sanctuary. Locally known as Chitranguri Kanmoli, the Chitranguri Bird Sanctuary is situated in the Ramnathpuram region of Tamil Nadu. Since 1989, the wetland has been a protected area and a bird sanctuary falling under the authority of the Ramnathpuram Division of the Tamil Nadu Forest Department. The Chitramburi Bird Sanctuary is an excellent refuge for migrating birds throughout the winter. Notable waterbirds sighted at the location include the spot-billed pelican, the little egret, the great egret, the open-billed stork, the purple heron, and the pond heron. The 12th Ramsar site of Tamil Nadu is Suchindram Therur Wetland Complex. It is located between Nagrakoila and Kanyakumari on National Highway No. 47. Suchindram Therur Wetland Complex is situated inside the Suchindram Therur Manakudi Conservation Reserve. It is designated as an important bird area and is located at the southernmost end of the Central Asian flyway of migrating birds. It was created for the purpose of bird nesting and annually attracts thousands of birds. It's a perennial, man-made tank. The 13th Ramsar site of Tamil Nadu is Vaduvur Bird Sanctuary. Vaduvur Bird Sanctuary is located in Vaduvur Lake, Mannargudi Taluk, Thiruvarur District, Tamil Nadu. This bird sanctuary, which covers an area of 112.638 hectares, is a vast man-made irrigation tank that serves as a refuge for migrating birds by providing suitable habitats for feeding, shelter, and nesting. Vaduvur Bird Sanctuary offers a diversified ecosystem, including several inlets and nearby irrigated agricultural fields, which give birds excellent nesting and feeding opportunities. The last and 14th Ramsar site of Tamil Nadu is Kanjanakulam Bird Sanctuary. The Kanjanakulam Bird Sanctuary is a protected area in Mudukulathur Ramnathpuram district, Tamil Nadu, India, that was designated in 1989. It is noteworthy as a breeding place for several migrating heron species, which roost in the abundant babul tree growth there. Painted stoke, white ibis, black ibis, little egret, and great egret are among the migratory waterbirds that visit here. The threatened spotbilt pelican breeds at this IBA qualified location. Rich in biodiversity, the marsh is home to species such as the spotbilt pelican, oriental data, oriental white ibis, and painted stoke. The marsh hosts IUC and vulnerable bird species, the river tern. That was all about the 14 Ramsar sites in Tamil Nadu, the highest among the states of India. Now let's see the next state.
Next state to study is the state of Gujarat. Gujarat is a state along the western coast of India. Its coastline of about 1,600 kilometers is the longest in the country, most of which lies on the Kathiawal Peninsula. Gujarat is the fifth largest Indian state by area. The state of Gujarat have four Ramsar wetland sites, the Toll Lake Wildlife Sanctuary and the Vadwana wetland were declared as Ramsar sites in the year 2021. And the latest Ramsar site of Gujarat is Khijdia Wildlife Sanctuary declared in the year 2022. Now let's look at these sites briefly. The first and the oldest Ramsar site of Gujarat is Nalsarovar Bird Sanctuary. It was declared as Ramsar site in the year 2012. Nal Sarovar Bird Sanctuary consists primarily a large lake and ambient marshes and is situated about 64 kilometers to the west of Ahmedabad city. It is a natural freshwater lake that is the Thar Desert's largest natural wetland and exhibits a dynamic habitat with fluctuating salinity and depth, depending on rainfall. It is a crucial stopover site along the Central Asia Flyway, with globally threatened species, including the critically endangered sociable lapwing and also the vulnerable marble teal, stopping by during migration, and the vulnerable sarus crane taking refuge in during the summer, since other water bodies are dry. The wetland also serves as a lifeline for a small population of the critically endangered Indian wild ass, which uses this habitat during the dry season. The next Ramsar site of Gujarat is Toll Lake Wildlife Sanctuary. The region is located in Gujarat's Mehsana district. This small reservoir, which is characterized by open water regions, was built in 1912 for agricultural purposes. It was designated a wildlife sanctuary in 1988 to safeguard the birds present here. This wildlife sanctuary is located on the Central Asian Flyway and is home to around 320 bird species, accounting for approximately 57% of Gujarat's bird species. The critically endangered white-rimmed vulture and sociable lapwing, as well as the vulnerable sarus crane, common pochard, and lesser white-fronted geese, can be found here. It is also vital for a population of blackbuck and other animals in the surrounding region during the dry seasons. The third Ramsar site of Gujarat is Vadwana Wetland. It is situated in Dabhoi Tehsi, Vadodara district, 45 kilometers from Vadodara city. The old Baroda state built this reservoir in around 1910. It is situated in a semi-arid agricultural terrain, surrounded by wheat and paddy fields, as well as communities. The wetland is internationally important for its bird life because it provides a wintering habitat for migratory waterbirds, including more than 80 species that pass through the Central Asian flyway. The endangered Pallas fish eagle, the vulnerable common pochard, and the near-threatened Dalmatian pelican, grey-headed fish eagle, and ferruginous duck can all be found here. The vulnerable river tern and sarus crane, as well as the near-threatened black-necked stoke, are among the resident species of this wetland site. The fourth and the latest declared Ramsar site of Gujarat is Khijriya Wildlife Sanctuary. The Khijriya Wildlife Sanctuary is located in Gujarat's Jamnagar district. This freshwater wetland near the coast of the Gulf of Kutch in Gujarat state was developed after the construction of a barn to protect the farms from saltwater ingress in 1920. The site is one of the most important waterbird habitats in northwest India, provides nesting, feeding, and roosting areas for a diverse range of resident aquatic and land-based species. These include the critically endangered Pallas fish eagle and Indian skimmer, as well as the endangered common pochard. That's is all about the four Ramsar sites in the state of Gujarat. Now let's see the next state on our list. The next state on our list is the state of Mizoram in northeast India. The name of the state is derived from Mizo, the self-described name of the native inhabitants, and Ram, which in the Mizo language means land. Thus Mizoram means land of the Mizos. 
The state got its first and only Ramsar site in the year 2022 which is known as Pala Wetlands. Palak Dil or Pala Tipo is the largest and biggest lake in Mizoram. It is located near Fura village in Saiha district, within the Mara Autonomous District Council in the southernmost district of Mizoram. Pala Wetland the biggest natural wetland of Mizoram, encompasses a reasonably deep lake and its surrounding forest catchment region. Many herbivore species, including sambhar deer, wild pig, and barking deer, thrive in the wetlands' low-lying marshy regions. The marsh is also home to many primate species, including the endangered hulok gibbon and fair's leaf monkey. The indigenous Mara people adore Pala wetland, which has a strong relationship to their past. The wetland provides the majority of fresh water and fish to the settlements on its outskirts, as well as irrigation water for wet rice production, horticulture, and other sorts of agriculture. That is all about the only wetland site in the Mizoram. Now let's move to the next state on the list. The next state on our list is Haryana. Haryana is a North Indian state surrounding New Delhi on three sides. The Yamuna River runs along its eastern border with Uttar Pradesh. Haryana has two major physiographic regions, the flat alluvial plain covering most of the state and, in the northeast, a strip of the highly dissected Shivalik Range. Remnants of the Aravli Range, which stretches from southwestern Rajasthan to Delhi, are evident in parts of southern Haryana. The Haryana got both of its Ramsar sites in the year 2021. The Bhindwas Wildlife Sanctuary and the Sultanpur National Park. Let us read about these two sites in brief now. The first Ramsar wetland site of Haryana is Sultanpur National Park. Sultanpur National Park is located at Sultanpur village on Gurugram Jizar Highway, 15 km from Gurugram, Haryana and 50 km from Delhi. This national park covers approximately 142.52 hectares. It supports almost 220 species, including winter migratory and local migratory waterbirds at critical life cycles. The Sultanpur National Park Act hosts to various endangered flora and fauna, a heaven for the species from the highly urbanized surroundings of Delhi and Gurugram. Species found here include 10 globally threatened species, like the sociable lapwing, the endangered Egyptian vulture, the Seca falcon, Pallas fish eagle, and the black bellied tern. The second Ramsar site of Haryana is Bhindwas Wildlife Sanctuary. It is the largest wetland site in the state of Haryana. It is a human made freshwater wetland. The site is located in the Jhazar district, about 15 kilometers from Jhazar town. In June 2009, it was also declared a bird sanctuary by the government of India. One can spot over 250 bird species in this wetland site throughout the year. It is a resting and roosting site for these birds. Ten globally threatened species are found here, including the endangered Egyptian vulture, steppe eagle, pallas fish eagle, and black bellied tern. That is all about the two Ramsar sites of Haryana. Now let's get on to the next state on our list. The next state on list of Ramsar sites is Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh is a state in the southeastern coastal region of India. It is the seventh largest state by area. Eastern Ghats forms the western end of the coastal plains of the state. The mighty rivers, Godavari and the Krishna, make up the central part of the plains in the state, and the area consists of fertile alluvial soil. There is only one Ramsar site in Andhra Pradesh, and that is Koleru Lake. Koleru Lake is located in Iluru district. Koleru Lake is one of the largest freshwater lakes in India, and forms the largest shallow freshwater lake in Asia. It is located between Krishna and Godavari deltas. It is a wildlife sanctuary. A natural eutrophic lake, located between the Godavari and Krishna river basins, supplied by two seasonal rivers and a variety of drains and streams, it serves as a natural flood balancing reservoir between the two river deltas. 
it supports fisheries, agriculture, and other related occupations in the area, as well as habitat for a variety of resident and migratory species, including dwindling populations of the vulnerable grey pelican. That is all essential information about the Koleru Lake, the only Ramsar site in the state of Andhra Pradesh. Now let us see the next state on the list. The next state on our list has the second most maximum Ramsar sites in India, that is the state Uttar Pradesh. The state of Tamil Nadu has the most Ramsar sites in India, which are 14, followed by the state of Uttar Pradesh, with 10 sites. Let us see them one by one. The first Ramsar site in Uttar Pradesh is Bakhira Wildlife Sanctuary. The Bakhira Wildlife Sanctuary is a freshwater wetland in the Sant Kabir Nagar district of eastern UP. It was designated as a Ramsar site in 2022 and it covers an area of 29 square kilometer. It is the largest natural floodplain wetland in the UP. The sanctuary was established in 1980 and is protected under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. It provides a wintering ground for species which migrate on the Central Asian flyway, some of which are threatened or near-threatened such as the endangered Egyptian vulture, the vulnerable greater spotted eagle, the common pochard, and the near-threatened oriental data. The next Ramsar site in Uttar Pradesh is Hedrapur Wetland. It was designated as a Ramsar site in 2021. The Hedrapur Wetland located on the Mujaffanagar Bijnor border between the Ganga and the Soni River, covers an area of 69.08 square kilometer. It is situated in the Hastinapur Wildlife Sanctuary. The Hedrapur wetland is an artificial lake that was created in 1984. Birds are drawn to this area because of its biodiversity. Exotic birds travel here after crossing Mongolia's hills. Important species found here include dolphins, turtles, alligators, crocodiles, butterflies, and deer. The next Ramsar site in Uttar Pradesh is Nawabganj Bird Sanctuary. It was designated as a Ramsar site in 2019. Nawabganj Bird Sanctuary is located in the Hasanganj district of Uttar Pradesh Unnao district. It is located around 50 kilometers from Lucknow on the Lucknow Kanpur route. Monsoon rains sustain this unique wetland, while the Sarda Canal provides extra water. It is a shelter for birds, including globally threatened species such as the Egyptian vulture and Pallas fish eagle, and the vulnerable lesser adjutant. The next Ramsar site in Uttar Pradesh is Parvati Agra Bird Sanctuary. The sanctuary is located in Uttar Pradesh Tarabganj Tehsi approximately 40 kilometers from Gonda district along the Mankapun Vabganj Road. The Parvati Agra Bird Sanctuary is a permanent freshwater habitat made up of two oxbow lakes. These wetlands are exclusive to Uttar Pradesh and provide great habitats for waterbirds. The sanctuary provides a heaven for many of India's threatened vulture species, including the critically endangered white rimmed vulture, the endangered Indian vulture and the endangered Egyptian vulture. The fifth Ramsar site in Uttar Pradesh is Saman Bird Sanctuary. Saman Bird Sanctuary is located near the village of Saman in the Karhal Tehsil in the Manpuri district of Uttar Pradesh. It is a seasonal oxbow lake on the Ganga floodplain. It is strongly dependent on the arrival of the southwesterly monsoon in July and August, which delivers the largest chunk of yearly rainfall. The sanctuary is particularly significant as a wintering location for a variety of migratory birds, including the greylag goose. There are other vulnerable species present, such as the sarus crane and the greater spotted eagle. The sixth Ramsar site in Uttar Pradesh is Samspur Bird Sanctuary. The Samspur Bird Sanctuary is situated near Salon in Raibreli district, Uttar Pradesh, about 122 kilometers from Lucknow on the Lucknow Varanasi Highway. It was established in 1987 on about 780 hectares of land. It is a perennial lowland marsh typical of the Indo Gangetic Plains. Its six connected lakes are heavily reliant on monsoon rains. 
The sanctuary harbors threatened species such as the endangered Egyptian vulture and Pallas fish eagle and the vulnerable common pochard. The next and the seventh Ramsar site in Uttar Pradesh is Sandy Bird Sanctuary. Sandy Bird Sanctuary is a freshwater marsh in Uttar Pradesh's Hardoi district. The wetland is mostly dependent on monsoon rainfall for its water supply. The site's abundance of aquatic vegetation makes it an ideal home for waterfowl, with over 40,000 individuals documented in 2018. It is a habitat for common teal, red-crested pochard, ferruginous duck, and the vulnerable sarus crane. BirdLife International has identified Sandy as an important bird area. The next and eight Ramsar site in Uttar Pradesh is Sarsai Navar Jhil. Sarsai Navar Jhil is a permanent marsh in the Itawa district of Uttar Pradesh. The site's name is derived from the large non-migratory crane found in this wetland, the vulnerable Sarus crane. This typical wetland of the Indogangetic floodplain is fed by precipitation runoff from the southwest monsoon rains. It is an example of cohabitation of humans and wildlife. Farming practices across most of the site play an important role in sustaining the waterbird habitats. Additionally, the critically endangered white-rimmed vulture and endangered woolly-necked stork are present here. BirdLife International has designated Sarsai Navar Jhil as an important bird area. The next and ninth Ramsar site in Uttar Pradesh is Sur Sarovar. Sur Sarovar, also known as Keetham Lake, is a man-made reservoir that was originally built to give water to the city of Agra during the summer. However, the wetland quickly became a significant and diverse ecology. The site offers a diverse combination of habitat types that serves as a heaven for both resident and migratory birds. The vulnerable greater spotted eagle, Salus crane, and catfish are among the threatened species found here. The site is significant for bird species migrating along the Central Asian Flyway. The tenth and the last Ramsar site of Uttar Pradesh is the Upper Ganga River Stretch, also known as Brijghat to Narora Stretch. It is a shallow river stretch of the Great Ganga River with intermittent small stretches of deep water pools and reservoirs upstream from barrages. The river provides habitat for IUCN red listed Ganga River dolphin, Gharial crocodile, turtles, otters and many more species. This river stretch has high Hindu religious importance for thousands of pilgrims and is used for cremation and holy baths for spiritual purification. Major threats to this site are sewage discharge, agricultural runoff, and intensive fishing. It was declared a Ramsar site in the year 2005. That is all about the 10 Ramsar sites in the state of Uttar Pradesh, the second highest among the states of India. Now, let's move to the next state on our list. The next state on our Ramsar list is the northeast state of Tripura. Tripura is a hilly state in northeast India, bordered on three sides by Bangladesh and home to a diverse mix of tribal cultures. It is the third smallest state in the country. There is only one Ramsar site in Tripura, and that is Rudrasagar Lake. The Rudrasagar Lake is a deep, extensive, lowland lake located in Melghar, Tripura. This lake has a perennial connection with one of the state's major rivers, Gomti, facilitating the natural breeding ground of the valuable indigenous endemic fishes. The lake is an important home for the IUCN red-listed three-striped roof turtle, Kachuga Dhonka. Because of the frequent rainfall and downstream terrain, the wetland is flooded four to five times each year, contributing to groundwater recharge. Rudrasagar is a potentially important bird area and attracts many waterfowl in winter. Among the rarer species recorded are the endangered bear spotchard and near-threatened ferruginous duck. That would be all about the Rudrasagar Ramsar wetland. Now let's see the next state on our list. The next on our list is Madhya Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh literally means central province and is located in the geographic heart of India. The Narmada River runs through the state, 
From east to west, between the Vindhya and Satpura ranges, these ranges and the Narmada are the traditional boundaries between the north and south of India. The highest point in Madhya Pradesh is Dhupgarh, with an elevation of 1,350 meters. There are four Ramsar sites in Madhya Pradesh, all declared in the year 2022. Now let's learn about these four sites one by one. The first Ramsar site in Madhya Pradesh is Bhoj Wetlands, and it is the largest Ramsar wetland site in Madhya Pradesh. Bhoj Wetland is made up of two contiguous human-made reservoirs, the Upper Lake and the Lower Lake. The Upper Lake was created in the 11th century by the construction of an earthen dam across the Kolans River, and the Lower was constructed nearly 200 years ago, mainly from leakage from the Upper, and is surrounded by the city of Bhopal. The lakes are very rich in biodiversity, particularly for macrophytes, phytoplankton, and zooplankton. Various species found here include natural and cultured fish species, resident and migratory birds, insects, reptiles, and amphibians. The second Ramsar site in Madhya Pradesh is Yashwant Sagar. Yashwant Sagar is a dam reservoir on the Gambhir River, located in the Indore district of Madhya Pradesh. Yashwan Sagar is one of two important bird areas in the Indore area and one of the most important birding spots in Madhya Pradesh's Malwa region. It is now primarily utilized for water supply to the city of Indore, although it is also used for commercial fish cultivation. In central India, Yashwan Sagar is known to be a stronghold for the vulnerable Sanu screen. Several shallow spots in the lake backwaters are ideal for waders and other waterfowl. Many islands serve as roosting spots for waterfowl when the water level recedes. The wetland attracts a high number of winter migrating birds due to its enormous shallow reed beds. The third Ramsar site in Madhya Pradesh is Sakya Sagar. Sakya Sagar is a man-made wetland in the Madhav National Park on the outskirts of Shivpuri. The site has a diverse landscape that includes open water and nearby wetlands, plantations, and a tiny portion of agricultural land. The reservoir is shallow, alkaline, and rich in nutrients. This wetland not only enhances the natural beauty of the region but also offers a constant water supply for wildlife and habitat for creatures such as migrating waterfowls and mugger crocodiles, the presence of which draws visitors. The wetland is also essential for nutrient cycling, groundwater recharge, and local microclimate control. The site is one of Shivpuri's three lakes. The fourth Ramsar site in Madhya Pradesh is Sirpur Wetland. Sirpur Wetland is an artificial wetland that has stabilized and gained near natural features during the previous two centuries. The site, also known as Pakshi Vihar, is a shallow, alkaline, nutrient rich lake that floods to a depth of 2 meters during the monsoon. During the winter, Waterbirds gather here. The site contains locals and migrants, such as the common pochard, Egyptian vulture, and Indian river tern. That is all about the four Ramsar sites in the state of Madhya Pradesh. The next state on our Ramsar site list is Goa. Goa is a state in western India with coastlines stretching along the Arabian Sea. It has a long history of Portuguese colonization. The state lies within the Konkan region, geographically separated from the Deccan Highlands by the Western Ghats. The state of Goa has one Ramsar site declared in the year 2022, the Nanda Lake. Nanda Lake comprises intermittent freshwater marshes that lie adjacent to one of the major tributaries of the Zuari River. They are linked to the adjacent river channel by a sluice gate which, when closed, enables the flooding of the marshes. This wetland supports a wide variety of migratory waterbirds and many other important plants and animals. Notable bird species include the black-headed ibis, wire-tailed swallow, bronze-winged jasana, and brahmani kite. The site enables local communities to store water during the off-monsoon season, to cultivate rice paddies downstream of the lake and support fishing and recreation. The lake also protects downstream areas from monsoon floods. 
That is all about Nanda Lake, the only Ramsar site in the state of Goa. Now let's see the next state on our list. The next state on the list is West Bengal. West Bengal is a state in eastern India, between the Himalayas and the Bay of Bengal, and the state has two Ramsar sites, the Sundarban wetland, which is located within the largest mangrove forest in the world, the Sundarbans. And the second Ramsar site is the East Kolkata wetlands. Let's learn briefly about them. The Sundarban wetland is located within the largest mangrove forest in the world, the Sundarbans, that encompasses hundreds of islands and a maze of rivers, rivulets and creeks, in the delta of the rivers Ganges and Brahmaputra on the Bay of Bengal in India and Bangladesh. The Indian Sundarban, covering the southwesternmost part of the delta, constitutes over 60% of the country's total mangrove forest area and includes 90% of Indian mangrove species. The mangrove forests protect the hinterland from storms, cyclones, tidal surges, and the seepage and intrusion of saltwater inland and into waterways. They serve as nurseries to shellfish and finfish and sustain the fisheries of the entire eastern coast. The Sundarban Tiger Reserve is situated within the site, and part of it has been declared a critical tiger habitat under national law and also a tiger conservation landscape of global importance. The Sundarbans are the only mangrove habitat which supports a significant population of tigers, and they have unique aquatic hunting skills. The site is also home to a large number of rare and globally threatened species, such as the critically endangered Northern River Terrapin, the endangered Irrawaddy Dolphin, and the vulnerable fishing cat. The second Ramsar site in West Bengal is East Kolkata Wetlands. World-renowned as a model of a multiple-use wetland, the site's resource recovery systems, developed by local people through the ages, have saved the city of Kolkata from the costs of constructing and maintaining wastewater treatment plants. The wetland forms an urban facility for treating the city's wastewater and utilizing the treated water for pisciculture and agriculture. Through the recovery of nutrients, in an efficient manner the water flows through fish ponds covering about 4,000 hectares. The ponds act as solar reactors and complete most of their biochemical reactions with the help of solar energy. Thus the system is described as one of the rare examples of environmental protection and development management where the local farmers have adopted a complex ecological process for mastering the resource recovery activities. That will be all about the Ramsar sites in West Bengal. Now let's see the next Ramsar site state of India. The last state on our list of Ramsar site states in India is the state of Bihar. Bihar is a state in East India, bordering Nepal. It is divided by the river Ganga, which floods its fertile plains. It is the third largest state by population and the twelfth largest by territory. There is only one Ramsar site in Bihar, which is the Kabartal wetland, also known as Kanwar Jhil. The Kabartal wetland is one of 18 wetlands within an extensive floodplain complex. It floods during the monsoon season to a depth of 1.5 meters. This absorption of floodwaters is a vital service in Bihar state where 70% of the land is vulnerable to inundation. During the dry season, areas of marshland dry out and are used for agriculture. Significant biodiversity is present here. The Kabartal wetland is an important stopover along the Central Asian Flyway, with migratory waterbirds using it to rest and refuel. Five critically endangered species inhabit the site, including three vultures, the red-headed vulture, the white rumped vulture and the Indian vulture. And to waterbirds, the sociable lapwing and bale spotcher. That will be all about the only Ramsar site in Bihar. That is all about the 75 Ramsar sites in India. If you like our effort, hit the like button and subscribe to get a notification of our latest videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.